Good morning, everyone. Um, this is the Critical Technologies Urban Tech for Social Impact Conference. I want to say good morning to all the people that are in the United States and good afternoon to the people in Israel. Thank you all for being here with us today. My name is Sharon Yavoyalon. I'm an architect with a PhD from the Faculty of Architecture and Town Planning at the Technion working on my postdoc research here at the Urban Tech Hub in the Jacobs Institute at Cornell Tech. Um, almost three years ago, in a pre-pandemic world, we envisioned creating this platform for researchers from Cornell University, Cornell Tech, and the Technion to think together about social issues in smart cities. It has been postponed several times, and after the long and challenging journey we've all been through this year, I'm very excited to finally see it taking shape. And we've gathered here today to think about the connection between inequality, technology, and cities. These connections define our time. For example, my son is infatuated with luxury cars. Ferrari, Lamborghini, McLaren, you name it, he knows the exact model, the uh, year, and of course, how much it costs. And a few days ago, I was walking with him in Times Square, um, a post-pandemic Times Square who's starting to look a little bit like it used to look before the pandemic. Um, and he noticed a Ferrari. So he's screaming out loud, a Ferrari. And then another one, and a Tesla and another one. And then on the other side of the street, he noticed a homeless person and another one. And then in the spare of the moment, he suggested, mom, let's count them. And I don't know why, but we did. Um, uh, you'll count the car, the homelessness, and I'll count the car. And he counted 33 luxury cars. And I've lost count at about 20 something homeless people. So we have those two ends of the socioeconomic scale, 33 Ferraris, 20 something homeless people, and Times Square, with its countless screens, a glorious manifestation of technology in urban space. Cities, inequality, and technology, all condensed into 15 minutes of walking in the city with my son. This intensity, density, and diversity are what make cities so unique. However, in my example, the city, the inequality and technology don't do anything for one another. They just exist side by side. And the contrast and lack of connection are so obvious that even a child can see them clearly. And so the aim of this gathering today is to link those issues together. Times Square is filled with technology. Much of it is designed to keep the homeless under control, but could it help them instead? Can the screens in Times Square help a homeless person find a, a ride home in a Ferrari? I'm just joking, of course. Uh, with all the great minds that are here with us today, we can do much, much better than that. And it is important that we will, because although the data has been telling us for years about the spatial dimension of inequality, we still lack technology-based spatial tools to understand the mechanism that create and spread disparities throughout the city. So for the next few hours, we will be thinking together about ways in which technology can help improve the quality of lives and well-being in the city, and maybe even to help promote more equitable cities. Before we do, I want to thank the uh, Azrieli Foundation for supporting this conference and for all the people who helped to make this happen. Uh, Michael Samwalian, the founding director of the Urban Tech Hub, and Ron Brachman, the director of Jacobs Institute. Without your endorsement and support, I couldn't have pulled this off. I also want to thank from the bottom of my heart to the academic committee, to Merava Ron, Jennifer Miner, 
and Wendy Ju, who contributed from their time and uh, helped produce the content for the conference. And I want to also thank Jagan Sub Subramanian and Vasilis Dimitrios, uh, who helped behind the scenes and to Anthony Townsend for moral support and cultural translation, which was needed from, from time to time. I also want to thank all the speakers who have gathered here today and speakers, those of you that have turned their camera off, it's time to turn your camera on so we can see the diversity of all the people that we will be talking today. Uh, I am sure that your talks will shed new and interesting light on varied ways in which technology can be harnessed to force as force for positive change for our cities. Finally, I want to thank each and every one of you, the attendees, that unfortunately due to the webinar format, we can't see you, uh, but your presence here is crucial. And we hope to hear from you through the chat and the Q&A features, and we will make sure to, uh, to address those. And before delving into the exciting content that we have laid out for you, let me hand the mic to Michael Samolian, the director of the Urban Tech Hub, to introduce the deans of the three institutions for the greeting session. Michael, the floor is yours. Great, thank you, Sharon. And uh, I'm really excited about uh, the day that's upcoming. So welcome everyone from one of uh, the newest ventures at Cornell Tech, the Jacobs Urban Tech Hub. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a hub is, hubs are essentially centers of activity that bring together the thinkers, the doers, and the users of cities and technology, which is many, many people, uh, hopefully everybody on the call. We're also bridges between, the ac between academic resources and public needs, and we have a pretty broad definition of what the public is and who the public is, including industry, government, nonprofits, and local communities. One of the goals of hubs uh, is to engage thought, thought leaders. And this is a great example of how we share faculty's research and ideas with the broader public. But the real goal is really to discover new solutions through applied research to help improve the quality of life and living in cities. We're here to promote the positive impact of technologies. And after a year, unlike any others, we're a big believer that you know, positive change can occur uh, and you know, challenges really inspire innovation almost unlike any other time. So while it's been a, a really tough year for so many of us, uh, we believe that this will inspire new ideas and innovations throughout cities and living. Uh, before handing it over to Greg, I wanna thank Sharon, uh, who was our first urban tech postdoc here at the Hub. We were so lucky to have her join us and I'm incredibly proud of her research and accomplishments and uh, thrilled to see all of the dynamic dialogue for uh, that we're gonna experience for the rest of the day. Uh, so I'd like to introduce Greg Morissette, who is frankly one of the biggest cheerleaders of the Urban Tech Hub uh, at Cornell Tech. And I'm, I'm thrilled to, to work with Greg. Uh, Greg is the Jack and Ryla Nifshi Dean and Vice Pro Pro Provost of Cornell Tech. Uh, Greg? Thanks, Michael. And uh, thank you, Sharon, for organizing what I think is as you said, I've been looking forward to this for a long time. I think it's a really exciting conference on urban futures. Um, uh, I just want to say a few words about Cornell Tech to open things up. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, Cornell Tech began as a collaboration between Cornell University and the, Is the Technion Israel Institute of Technology almost 10 years ago. Um, so it was about 10 years ago that there was a competition to build a new applied science and, and engineering research campus here in the heart of New York City and to help build the tech ecosystem in New York. And uh, Cornell and the Technion paired together to win that. And uh, we've been operating uh, roughly since 2011, although our, our first handful of students weren't until a few years later. Today, we've grown to over 400 master's students and PhDs. Uh, we started from just one or two faculty. Now we have over 35. Uh, we have three masters of engineering degrees, an MBA degree, a law a master's degree, and with the Jacobs Institute that, that Ron's going to tell you about in a second, uh, we offer dual degree programs with the Technion in uh, connected media, health tech, and this year, our most recent edition, urban tech. Uh, so all these programs focus on digital technologies and the transformative effect they can have on society. 
uh, one of the things that we're best known for uh, on this campus is the entrepreneurial spirit and the way we infuse that into all of those programs, whether it's or the engineering ones. And to date, we've launched over 70 startups, almost all of whom are based right here in New York City. Over 90% of them are still here in New York City, helping to feed and grow that tech ecosystem. Um, about half of those startups grew out of our master's studio program, which is a really innovative program that brings all the there to work on real world challenges. And the other half grew out of a really exciting Jacobs Institute postdoc program called Runway. If I look forward to the next 10 years at Cornell Tech, we plan to double down on computational intelligence, topics such as artificial intelligence, goal is to become the campus, the leading campus focused on translation and holistic approaches to digital intelligence. Um, and, and to take real world tackle them, including healthcare, transportation, public housing, and so forth. So this conference is particularly relevant to that 10 year visit vision. Um, and, I, and I'm really excited to see everyone. Thank you so much for joining. I look forward to hearing the discussion and learning from everyone. Welcome. Uh, thanks, Greg. Uh, so now I'd like to introduce Ron Brackman, uh, my boss and the, the man who really makes the Jacobs Institute happen. And Jacobs is this incredibly novel approach to research uh, and, uh, and teaching. Uh, Ron is the director of the Jacobs Technion Cornell Institute and a professor of computer science. Ron? Michael, thanks very much. Uh, again, I want to thank Sharon and everyone who made this event possible. It's very exciting. As Sharon mentioned, this has been a long time in the making, and uh, we're very excited that it's we finally gotten to this day. Uh, as Greg mentioned, Cornell Tech as a whole was a joint effort between Cornell University and the Technion Israel Institute of Technology. On the other hand, as things have evolved, the Jacobs Institute itself, which is about one third of Cornell Tech, is really the center of the collaboration between Technion and Cornell. Uh, we think of it as the incubation hub for Cornell Tech, a place where new experimental schemes are hatched, where we uh, are expressly tasked with pushing the envelope in education, research, and entrepreneurship and uh, impact both in New York City and more broadly. So while Cornell Tech was a joint effort of the two universities, Jacobs is really where I think you could say the collaboration is focused. And as such, we represent an interesting blend of the point of view and capabilities and skills and outlook of the two universities that share a lot in common, but also have a great amount of diversity between them. And it makes Jacobs and this collaboration very, very special. The Urban Tech Hub, as Michael so ably described, is, is another example of this kind of incubation and experimentation uh, mission, where we try to find ways to create innovative structures and programs for research, education, and entrepreneurship that allow us to explore how technology can best impact New York City. That was one of the founding principles of Cornell Tech, but also uh, the rest of the world, and especially through our partnership with the Technion. With the Urban Tech Hub, we're pairing for the first time in Cornell Tech's history, a novel master's degree program. Uh, it's what we call a concentration, which has just finished its very first year. Uh, Jagan is one of our uh, members, one of the members of our very first cohort of master's students, helping us discover what Urban Tech really should be. Um, and we're pairing that program with a complementary professional side which is managed by a senior visionary leader, that, that's Michael. Um, we haven't done this before with the other two Jacobs hubs. One is in what we call connective media, the other is in health tech. So again, this is an experiment and a way to figure out how we can all be most effective in having impact in New York City and beyond. Um, in the latter aim, the professional side, if you will, uh, Michael is joined by Anthony Townsend, Rit Agarwal, Sharon and several others, and they've all really excelled in pushing the limits of what we can do in an academic environment, uh, looking at partnering with government and industry and nonprofits and exploring new horizons together. Now, this particular conference is a great example of this exploratory partnership style activity. 
we believe it's the very first large scale collaborative undertaking. And for sure, it's the first major conference jointly done by Cornell, Cornell Tech and the Technion. Jacobs Institute is right in the middle of that convergence. We help facilitate things. You've heard again about the role of the hub and uh, that will continue to be our role as we go forward. Given the novel direction of the urban tech hub, we're excited about the opportunity to bring together people in a wide variety of fields that normally don't appear to fit closely together. And you all represent that convergence here today, bringing together thinkers from computer science, information science, civil and environmental engineering, architecture, town planning, and other areas that normally don't fit together. You won't see them in the same building or in, even in the same school or college at any university. Um, but because of the uh, collaborative and collective nature of our activity here, we're able to bring everyone together. The thing that binds us all is that we all have interest in what we might call urban applications. Um, this hub and the conference are uh, examples of finding new ways for all of us to work together, explore new avenues, and uh, we hope uh, create some new breakthroughs. We have high hopes for the meeting. Uh, bringing you all together in what we think of as a truly transdisciplinary way. And uh, given the activities of today and tomorrow, we hope to see some real tangible outcomes that will continue to influence research and impact, impact long after the meeting is over. We hope you all enjoy the meeting and remain fully engaged the whole time. We're certainly thrilled to have you all with us today. So welcome, Bokar Tov, good morning, good afternoon, and Michael, thank you. Okay. Thanks, Ron. Uh, now it's my pleasure to introduce Mi Jin Yoon, who, uh, in addition to being the uh, Dean at AAP and a representative of the collaboration uh, that Ron discussed, also an old friend of mine. So I'm really thrilled to have Mi Jin join us today. Uh, Mi Jin is the Gail and Ira Druka Dean of the College of Art, Architecture, and Planning at Cornell. Mi Jin. Thanks, Michael. I want to thank the organizers and participants again. I think this conference is incredibly timely uh, and uh, very well framed. Um, by way of introduction, um, and in our contemporary context where big data, smart cities, and digital urbanism are part of our lexicon, I thought it might be interesting to revisit the origins a story of sorts for the smart city, um, or specifically for applied computer and information systems to urban planning policy and action. Um, so in order to kind of reflect backwards to look forwards on this topic of critical technologies. So many of you know, late in the 60s and uh, throughout the 70s, this little known uh, urban think tank in LA City Hall called the Community Analysis Bureau embarked on data and information systems as a tool to guide urban decision making. Uh, they utilized at the time infrared aerial photography, computer databases, or built computer databases, employed cluster analysis, and the Community Analysis Bureau believed that computation data and analysis would spur change in the city and affect public policy and urban planning for the, for the good. Um, so as early as 50, 60 years ago, they had this ambition to create and employ urban information systems to tackle the social and physical challenges of the city. So a half century later, so where we are at the moment, with advances in computer science, information science, and uh, the ambition to uh, use these systems to tackle urban challenges has only accelerated. And we see a proliferation of uh, city initiatives such as Data LA or New Urban Mechanics, Mayor's Initiatives that invest in data collection, making it both, I think, wider in scope and more granular in nature to create this ever-expanding repository of agencies commissioned to gather data. Um, but if we zoom out, I think we could, in a kind of simplified way, say the notion of the smart city consistently over the last half century um, was uh, defined by the belief that more data and better use of information technology would help decision makers more effectively solve the social and physical uh, challenges, urban challenges. Um, 
And now cities, we and this group more knowledgeable than I clearly uh, understand how sophisticated our technologies have grown. We use data to identify patterns, uh, project outcomes based on probability. We have real time data feedback. We can employ machine learning to iterate, design strategies faster than ever before. But I think Greg alluded to this in his uh, term intelligence. Uh, but intelligent cities, I would say, as opposed to smart cities, use data not just to solve, but to conceive of possibility uh, or what can be uh, with both a kind of near and distant future in mind with a kind of fuller, more nuanced picture, not only of systems or physical conditions of the city, but what life and society might look like in a just livable and sustainable future. So I think we all know that many of the world's greatest cities are at an inflection point, grappling with issues of access, affordability, some struggling with economic stagnation, others dealing with climate adaptation and failing infrastructure. These are the many, many layered challenges facing cities. And while technology may be consistently seen as a solution to both new and entrenched urban problems, I think we as producers, and I'm using the big we, not just those of us on the Zoom, but the big we as pr both producers and users of technology uh, and both producers and users of the city have yet to solve for, for how to build a just livable, <clears throat> thriving and sustainable urban future. So we return to the central question, can critical technologies assist city leaders, lawmakers, neighborhood, communities in addressing uh, these challenges to make more equitable cities. Um, and I think as technology and data are increasingly democratized, redefining, I think, boundaries uh, and agency from top down versus bottom up solution, our expectations of the city have shifted from smart city to intelligent city to just the just city. So um, to me, it's clear that um, you know, the future is both rational and speculative, or our technologies need to be both rational and speculative, critical and optimistic um, to transform our cities. But no matter how instrumental or uh, intelligent our technology is, I think this cannot be accomplished alone, which is, I think, the great premise of uh, Cornell Tech and the Urban Tech Hub, that we need to deeply link technologies with policy, planning, and advocacy. So if we look back uh, at the Community Analysis Bureau a half century ago, I think there were some lessons learned that might be relevant to this conference. Um, so while the Bureau failed to use information systems in a way that could actually tackle social and physical challenges in the city, due to the gap between data analysis and planning policy, the work they did did reveal uh, overwhelming data on the inequality of the city itself in Los Angeles after decades of segregation. So in our contemporary moment, maybe we can look back on how this little known bureau enabled others to address the spatial inequalities of the city. It led to resources like the community block grant. Um, and the intelligence of the city uh, really being the ability to harness a kind of collective and citizen centered perspective. So David Harvey coined this notion of the citizens right to the city. And I think with the democratization of technology, technology is no longer in the hands of just a few, but in the hands of many. And this democratization can enable us to build and co-create cities and spaces that are shaped by all of us uh, for all its citizens. Thank you. Great. Uh, thank you, Meechan. Thank you for sharing that. It was uh, really intriguing and thought provoking. And hopefully we'll start to address some of those issues today. Uh, so now it's my pleasure to introduce um, our uh, collaborator from the Technion, Yasha Grubman. Uh, Yasha is the Dean of the Faculty of Architecture and Town Planning at uh, Technion. Yasha? Thank you, Michael. 
Um, and thank you, Sharon and Ron, and all the other organizing for the initiative and the invitation. I'm very proud to be here today and represent the Technion. Uh, Cornell Tech has its 10th anniversary this year and indeed had uh, many achievements in such a short time. As a Dean of the Faculty of Architecture and Town Planning at the Technion, I must confess that only recently, about two years ago, when Ron and I have started discussing the Urban Tech Hub, that I became very excited. The reason is uh, that it is very exciting is that I believe that the Urban Tech Hub can and is becoming an important interface between academia and the profession or real life in New York City uh, and the world as mentioned by Ron. And no less important from our point of view, the first real connection between our faculty and the Jacob Institute. The Faculty of uh, Architecture and Town Planning at Technion is one of the only faculties worldwide that integrates design sciences in all scales from industrial design, architecture, landscape architecture to urban and regional planning. I believe that together with the Department of Architecture at Cornell, we can support and strengthen what is evolving to be a strong lighthouse for the profession. As you're well aware, the Technion is one of the main reasons for what is usually referred to the startup nation. I would like to share with you that we now feel at the Technion a shift in the center of gravity or the focus of innovation from traditional startup to what is already has been defined as build tech. Hundreds of new startup companies are already out there Dozens of hackathons are initiated every year, some led by our faculty, and many people in this moment are looking for ways to shift the building industry's state of mind and technology from the 20th centuries, and in many cases, 19th century, to the 21st century. This conference is focusing on critical technologies and is looking at the connection between inequality, technology, and cities. I hope that it will promote looking beyond the light of the strip map, maybe away from Times Square, away from Ferraris and homelesses that are the, uh, looking under the street light and promote the use of new technologies to map and better understand the neglected, uncharted, usually very quiet communities and individuals and contribute to a shift in the way we perceive smart cities, technologies, and sustainable environment. As far as I remember, this is the first gathering of its kind between our institution and the various stakeholders are going to present here today. I'd like to end by extending my gratitude and admiration to Sharon, Ron, and the others, what I'm sure will be a rememberable event. Thank you very much. Great. Then. Thank you, Yasha, for that. Uh, and as a, a, as a good case in point for uh, collaboration, due to the, the fact that we were all online um, this past year, I was able to have multiple faculty from the Technion guest lecture at my urban systems course. So it shows that there are these kind of like windows of opportunity that we should really think about, um, you know, taking advantage of uh, in terms of further collaboration. Uh, so now I'm going to hand it back to you. Thank you, Deans, for joining us. I hope you can uh, uh, remain for part um, parts of the day, but we are going to look at um, having um, some collateral developed at the end of this, so we'll be able to uh, uh, record uh, a lot of the discussions today. I'm going to hand it back to you, Sharon. Thank you, Michael. Uh, thank you, Ron, Dean Morissette, Dean Yoon, and Dean Grobman. We hope that we'll, you will stay with us for the presentation and panels and discussions. Um, I'm going to walk you through the structure of the day. We have a very exciting and interesting day laid out. Uh, we will follow five main questions in five panels. Why, what, who, how, who and where. Um, why is it important to harness technology to create more equitable cities? In this panel, it's the first panel that will be starting in a moment. We have decision makers from both New York City and Israel who will frame the main challenge they are dealing with. Uh, what will be the uh, following session? 
and there we will try to understand how can technology con or whether technology can contribute to cities what do we want from technology and the people and institutions that create it uh, how will be two consecutive session sessions that will talk about current technologies contributions to societal challenges this will be examples of research that are going on right now in the three institutions um, and it will exemplify through uh, the projects from the three academic departments it's ranging from data driven urban research to mixed reality to visualization simulation and so forth uh, the closing session uh, will cover the who and the where and it's really worth staying to hear it because we'll give a very uh, fascinating uh, examples of uh, decision making environment and talking to decision makers in their work process so without further ado and actually on time we will move for the first session uh, the why I'm handing over the mic to Merav Aaron Gutman, an assistant professor at the Technion's Faculty of Architecture and Town Planning, the head of the um, Social Hub at the Technion, and um, the leading of the Sociotech uh, Lab. Uh, Merav, please take the stage, and I'm going to ask all the panelists that are not in the session to turn off the cameras to give the stage to the five people that are talking uh, right now. Merav, the, the floor is yours. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Mike. Uh, 